Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, and this video is actually a June trading recap. And as you can see from this chart, I've done not too bad actually. Uh, so basically I'm just gonna be going over some of the trades, um, a review of MIC, which is what has led to this uh, already in my first month, which the PLs aren't big, but that's because I'm using small size. Um, and my most valuable lessons from these trades. So yeah, I guess I'll get right into it. Actually, before I get into it, I need to mention um, me and my trading friend group started a new channel. And basically, every single week we are uploading an episode. Uh, it's usually like 50 minutes long of just our, tr our trading week recap. Like we recap our week, our trades, and maybe our psychology from that. And I mean, it's really great. Um, I really recommend you guys go check that out. So go subscribe and it's in the links in the description. So yeah, I really recommend you guys check that out. So this is just in general, all my shorts this month. Um, it also includes some in the previous month. And then I think one tr this trade is in July. And so, I mean, you could just look at those. But basically, I mean, I haven't done too bad. Uh, in the beginning, starting out in MIC, I was using really small size, so that's why those gains are so tiny. But now I've stepped it up, and I'm getting I'm getting usually like my profit factor is like one to one, so my winners are the same as my losers, pretty much. Uh, but fees offset that, so I'll talk about that later. Um, and as you can see, slowly sizing up, and I kind of did that unintentionally. I'm risking like twenty five dollars per trade, which is one percent of my account. So I'm taking it really slow, and that's super key. That's what MIC recommends. Uh, going into detailed, it looks like I am most unprofitable on Thursdays, so that's very interesting. I also have the most trades that day, but it looks like looks like I'm profitable the other days. So I'm not going to do anything based off of my stats yet. I'm going to give it two months, three months. I don't want to act on something that isn't like I don't have enough data on, but it's just interesting to look at. Uh, Win-loss expectancy, I wanted to show you guys this. So, for shorting so far, and this is shorting in general, this isn't even just in uh, June. And so, 75% win rate. I mean, that's pretty good. Uh, my profit factor is 1.14. That is not good. <laughs> and my fees offset that even more. So, I mean, I'm going to have to slowly learn how to maximize my trades and maximize my risk reward. And I'm working on that right now. That's actually one of my goals for July to maximize my risk reward. So getting into the setups, uh, these are all setups that MIC teaches. I highly recommend you join MIC. It's truly the best and I'll explain that later. Uh, but anyways, broken day one setups, uh, uh, three for four on them. I mean, these are so far one of my favorites. Uh, my favorite are actually Death Candle Bounce, and I mean I still have to, I've kind of, I haven't traded these in a while. I don't know if that's because they haven't happened or because I've been trading other things, uh, but I think I want to start trading more of these. Uh, these and Broken Day Ones, those two are my favorite setups. And so these are my stats for them. Um, I mean pretty good. Uh, again, I was using tiny size with these ones, but I learned that with the Death Candle Bounce, your under view up and you're risking just a little bit above so you can get in full size instantly and my full size is usually around 50 shares um, so yeah I'm really excited to start fine-tuning that setup for me because I think I'll perform well in it uh, first red day this one's kind of a shock to me and I'll talk about this later in my trade recaps um, but first red days are usually everyone's favorite and best setup but I haven't performed incredibly well. Uh, at first I was doing really good and I was like, wow, okay, this is good. But then I lost on, I think this TRCH and Wish. And I'm gonna talk about stock selection later because that's super important. Uh, the last setup is low hanging fruit. And I have a lot to say about this one. Uh, this is the setup that MIC talks about nonstop. And I agree, I mean, it's a super high probability setup. Uh, although this month there have been some squeezes that would have gotten you stopped out for like a max loss. But have your hard stops in and good sizing. 30% size overview up, adding full size under. That'll help you maximize your risk reward and you won't blow up. Um, but anyways, the reason, so I actually stopped playing low hanging fruit 
and the reason for that is under PET, I really want to get the best risk reward setups, and for me, I don't think low hanging fruits have the best risk reward because your 30% size, uh, it's nail and bail, meaning you got to get in and get out really quickly. You usually can't hold for a long turn down because these stocks tend to like, they're low volume a lot of the time, so they could be like manipulated up and stuff. Um, but I just feel like, so since they're nail and bail and you can't use full size, I'm just getting like small wins. So like you, like you see here, $1, $3, $0.25, and these are all wins. And, I mean, they're just not good for under PT and small size. So once I size up, once I use 200, 300 shares, then they will become more worth it, and I'll get like $20 gains from them. But right now, I just don't see the point. I think I should focus on more uh, better risk reward setups like Broken Day 1s or All Day Fades, which I'm gonna start trying out and uh, incorporating that into my broken day one setups. So I'm gonna show you low hanging fruit first. Um, and when I first joined MIC, this is the setup I started with. And I had a 100% win rate on the four trades I took. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. But you know, I was winning super small and I was risking a lot. So I was like, what's the problem with this? But anyways, these are some of my trades. As you can see, it's super nail and bail and I mean, this one's pretty good. I probably had an average of 525, covered at an average of 505, so I got like 20 cents a share there. That's pretty good. But again, small size, um, which makes it hard. And I was probably risking somewhere way up here, so, and there's not much, there's nowhere to add down here. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, these were my plans on it. This is how low hanging fruit works. You go 520, 530, 540, and that is because of the previous day where. It had all this trap, all this trapping act action, and so once it popped up into those trapped long areas, um, that's where I shorted. My hard stop was probably a little bit above this, and I mean it's a high probability setup because bag holders are just gonna sell off when they break even. Um, stop over high a day. That's that was my plan. So like, see, I was risking like five eight to make twenty cents. So I was risking. Um, 60 cents to make 20 cents. That just doesn't make sense to me. It's high probability setup, so that makes sense to me. Uh, but it's everyone's favorite setup, so there's gotta be something I'm missing and I'll figure it out later. And I'll let you guys know, because you guys might have the same struggles as me. All right, moving on to my favorite setups. One of my favorite setups, Death Candle Bounce. And these are them. Uh, this is one of them and oh, sorry. This one's not a death candle <laughs> This one's a death candle and this one's a death candle. Let me make them bigger. The death candle is basically a kill candle So it's just a huge the biggest red candle on the day with a lot of volume And I really like when it's after a stuff move kind of like right here um, TOS was wacky. There's no volume, but uh, I really like it when it goes through view up because that's a clear trend change and I can short the pop to view up I don't usually like it when it's like above view up because then I'm scared it's just kind of support and hold there. Um, but of course I need to get more experience in the market. I've only gotten two months in the listed market and I mean I'm going to learn over time. But this first trade um, right after a death candle I kind of missed this bounce because I had a whole complication with locating the wrong stock and all that. Um, I probably shouldn't have even played this one but I did. But I reacted well once I was in. Once I got in, I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't have got in here, so I'm looking to nail bail. And because I may, I, I'm just thinking like I did something wrong. Okay, let me let me just get out. And also, I want to mention when when your setup it needs to happen quick, it's not good for these stocks to hold up. And so when your setup isn't working in your favor really quickly, it's good to at least size down or just cover all. And that's what I did. And I mean, this was pretty awesome when it happened. I mean, it was great. Uh, now to this trade, this was beautiful. Big death candle, um, clean bounce, and I hit that. And this was one of my first death candle trades. This is one of my first trades at all. And usually you want to cover really quickly, but I was like, you know, a lot of the time it washes down once, it bounces, and then it washes down twice. And so I was like, you know, why don't I just hold a little bit longer uh, and try to get press squeeze more out of this. I mean, I was I was more of a beginner. Probably should have nailed bailed, 
but I did that and I did really good. Uh, and I covered at support, which I could have covered down here uh, anyways, but I mean, I don't know. Anyways, the next setup is Broken Day 1. And these are one of my favorite setups. So I think I have, oh yeah. I would go up, I was gonna go over first Red Day, but let me go over this one real quick. OSMT. Let me actually pull up my TOS charts for this. This was pretty recent. And the, this is a setup I'm really learning to like. But once it crossed view off on market open after a couple stuff moves, I was like, okay, this thing's pretty heavy. Um, and so after a while of it going down, I was like, okay, this is pretty broken. So I shorted the pop to view up. And like I said, this one didn't work out very quickly. I was kind of scared. I had a hesitation like, oh, should I just cover all? Should I do this? Uh, but what I did was cover some. And my risk was uh, probably like, I think it was like 4.8, 4.7, somewhere up there. And so I covered some to, to take some off and lock in some gains. And luckily it worked. Uh, but something I learned that is super important for this trade is not to cover right below support. Because if a stock is bouncing off a support level nonstop, what's the point of doing it right below? Because once it breaks, it's probably going to have a sharp move down. So you want to go line to line. That's what MIC teaches. So once, so I should have covered more like right here or down here at the four levels, maybe four one. But instead, I put it right below the support. But as you can see, when it broke the support, it was a big sharp move down. And this was a big size. This this arrow was a big size. Um, and I mean, I locked some in on the support, and then I had a lot down there. So if I had just waited a little bit and covered at the next support after the recent support had broken, I would have gotten a lot better gains and a lot better risk reward. Uh, but this was an awesome setup. I really, uh, I covered there that last bullet because that was the major support line. I probably could have squeezed more out of this, but I think uh, I did pretty good on that one. So, first red day. Let's go over that one. This one has been... I don't know I don't know what to say about it but it's been something <laughs> so let me go over my root trade which is an awesome trade uh, I really like this trade let's see so I actually noticed a pattern recently it's basically a stock runs up one two three days and the third day is usually trappy it's just dun, 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 dun. and then pre-market it's hovering the green to red line and then on market open or a little bit pre-market it starts to break down and that's when I like to hit the pop and so as you can see that happened here hit the pop cover some at support and then I I got a little impatient and covered the rest I think the the trader I am now would definitely have held longer because I've really learned to maximize uh, my covers uh, so an example where this didn't work was TRCH this was another one, and I mean, this one I talked to Alex in MIC, huge help. Um, he said this one was just unfortunate. I mean, I had, I was, I did really good. I shorted this big first green candle here, and then um, I just got stopped out. I mean, I the hard stop was good. Thinking of it now, I probably could have lowered it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think this was a good trade because I followed my plan. That's what really matters. So Wish was another uh, first red day setup. Now, I want to talk about stock selection right now. As you all know, Wish is super non-niche. Everyone knows the company Wish, and that automatically makes it non-niche for me. And, I mean, this stock is pretty crazy. Look at the volume it trades. Uh, I think this is the one minute, and it's trading that much volume and it's a high price stock, so high dollar volume. Like, that's trading a lot of volume. Um, this is super non-niche, and that's what I want to say. Stock selection is super key. You want to stick to what you're good at and uh, stick to the easy stocks. Uh, Wish, I think it, it's just a super hard trade. Um, I mean, I played it well. I followed my plan. I really like this trade, actually, because look. I shorted the bounce uh, to my to this green to red uh, red to green line for the first red day setup, and uh, a lot of people also shorted up here, which would have been really good for me because it would have maximized risk reward. Um, 
but I covered at support and then I stopped out for the rest. I think this was an awesome trade and I love looking at this chart because I took some profits. I was holding more for another move down, but it just didn't happen because like, look at this volume. It's insane. Um, and here's the 15 minute chart. So yeah, you have the run up, run up. First red day breaks the green to red line. Pretty good looking. Um, and I just got squeezed. Um, but that was a great trade. I mean, I don't know. Uh, my trades this month have been really great. Um, and I think the reason I'm not profitable, which let me go back here. Uh, technically, I am $9 up on the month with my small size, which is really good. But fees, of course, locates on Trade Zero usually cost like three, four dollars because I'm locating 100 shares, and I mean that that makes my winners smaller and my losers bigger. So I mean that's what happens. Until I size up, uh, the the fees will keep eating me. But I'm still gonna size up slowly. So quick plans for July. I really just plan on not overthinking. Um, overthinking in June has really taken a lot of my mental capital away and it's really important to have that mental capital open for just executing the process following your plan and uh, executing on good setups when you see a good setup take it execute the process learn from it and i think by the end of july i'll have a lot of data um maybe even a month after july um to where i will be able to cut out the setups i'm really bad at and fine tune the ones i'm good at and maximize risk reward so that's kind of my plan for July. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of sizing up, I'm gonna do what James Freelander uh, recommended to me, which was uh, if you have a green week, size up a little bit. If you have a red week, uh, take that size you just added back away. And what I'm gonna do is 25% of my current risk. So I'm risking $20 right now. So if I have a green week next week, I'm gonna go $25. If I have a red week that week, then I'll go back to $20. But Really, this is gonna size me up really quickly if I'm doing good. I'll be sized up, sized up, sized up, 20, 25%, 25%. It's gonna go really quick. Um, like think in, th in six months, I'll be using like pretty big size if I'm able to have good weeks as I'm sizing up. So sizing up slowly is key. So just a quick talk about MIC. Um, this has been a life changer so far, and it's going to change my life so much farther in the future, too. Um, like, right away, I have been able to follow their process and just execute it well, and it works. Uh, just fees, I've taken me over. Uh, and I'm sizing up slowly, like they're saying, because if I size up quickly, I'll, I'll deviate from the process, and I'll start changing plans based off my size, and that's a no-no. Um, but really, there's no other place like MIC. I can seriously DM any of the mods anytime uh, and ask them any questions. Like I can send them a chart, say what did I do wrong here, or is this a trade I should just write off? And I have to thank Alex for that because whenever I have a losing trade or maybe a winning trade I want to learn something about, I just ask Alex and he really, really helps. Like these are some amazing traders you literally can just text anytime pretty much. and. They'll, they'll respond really quickly like Alex is seriously always on he needs to go on vacation um, but yeah there's no other place like it like seriously tell me a place where you can DM the mods anytime they're gonna give you a good well responded answer I literally don't know if there's another place like MIC um, something that is super different comparing MIC to all the other chat rooms and gurus and stuff is the community MIC isn't just uh, some guru teaching you and giving you their content it's a community of traders who wanted to help each other like I can like there's a lot of members in MIC that I talk to and that they're more experienced than me so I can just ask them any questions because I know they just recently probably went through that problem and there's seriously a chat room in MIC like there's so we use slack and there's a main trading chat which is biz which is during trading uh, the mods are helping us out telling us what to avoid telling us, um, okay, focus on these for short because it's broken, things like that. Um, but there's also another channel called After Hours, and I can just, you know, everyone has a good time in there. I share my trades. People can help me in there. Um, it's awesome. Like, seriously, just give it one month in MIC, and you will never leave. If you're hardworking, you will succeed in MIC, and fairly quickly, too. Um, I mean, this is 
crazy what I've done this month already. Um, I mean, again, going back to my calc or not my calculator, my um, going back to my thing, my calendar. Uh, these are all my trades with MIC so far, and like, it's incredible. I was on an eight-day win streak the second I joined. So when I joined, I had an eight-day win streak, <laughs> and I think the reason I started losing was because the market got more difficult. Um, it, it's more of a long market now. Things are squeezing. Things are running. Um, so I'm learning a lot from this market, and I'm staying safe which is another reason you don't want to size up too quickly, especially in this market. Um, but yeah, I just want to say MIC truly cares about everyone, and if you want to succeed, try MIC for a month. You will not leave. All right, so, I mean, I guess that's the end of this video. If you guys learned something, let me know down in the comments. I really hope I can add value to you guys and help your trading or maybe inspire you to join MIC if you're not in already. Um, I mean, it's, it's awesome. I can't can't wait to see my growth in a month two months six months a year like I'm 17 years old and in a year I'll be 18 I mean I'm turning 18 pretty soon but I'll be 18 years old and I mean I don't know I'll be somewhere I know that for sure um, like if I just keep working this hard it's really gonna pay off and I mean yeah that's what's so motivating uh, so yeah please drop a like again and check out my Next Gen Traders channel with my trading friends. Um, that's really awesome. We all get to talk and go over our trades. and So you can keep up with uh, what I'm doing over the month. And I'll see you guys in July, at the end of July. I'm going to come up with another one of these videos. And I really can't wait to do it. So, I mean, yeah, I'll see you guys in MIC After Hours. And in the comment section down below. Uh, bye.